My name is Scott Reed, uh, bus 27, drive out of the Antonia lot. I've uh, been a bus driver almost five years. The general public always asks why there's not seat belts on a bus. And there are buses in the country that have seat belts, but it's very hard to get kids to put seat belts on and monitor that. The best way to keep them safe is through um, smart design. You look at the seats of the bus, they're extra high. Most of the kindergartners or smaller children, you can't even see them. You might be able to see the top of their heads, um, which is a good indicator of whether or not they're sitting in their seat properly. So if there's an accident, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have that forward motion where they're going to be throwing forward. The seats are high enough that they're not going to go over the top if they're sitting in it properly. The seats are padded on both sides so that when there is that motion, there's padding to try to keep them safe and not break bones or at least keep them alive. When there's an accident, the force is going to force them into some of these nice soft seats. It's going to hurt, but they're safer. Um, the bus itself has a, a roll cage, if you think of it that way. The, each one of the windows where the bar is between the windows, there's a steel beam that goes all the way through the roof and back over the other side. So if there's a rollover, the weight of the vehicle can withstand, or the bus can withstand the weight of the vehicle or anything else that impacts it. It's a pretty strong design. The bus itself, you have the emergency features, so such as the door in the back, uh, the side doors, there's, I'm sorry, the side windows, there's four of them throughout the bus, and two roof hatches, so if there's any kind of fire or reason to evacuate the bus, no matter what orientation it's in, there's some kind of uh, device that they can get out of the bus safely. I have a large family, I have five kids, they're all in the Seckman School campus. And when the economy took a downturn and it started getting tough, I had to start working weekends, nights, holidays, times when you really wanted to spend with your kids. And mine were still fairly young at the time, so for me it made more sense to uh, stop working at my corporate job and come and work where I'm constantly in contact with my kids, their friends, and my community. I have all my kids on my bus, so it's all to spend time with the kids. When they're out of school, I'm out of school. Um, I get my summers off if I want to, and I get to spend time with them. Every driver has to find their way of, of being proactive, know what to expect from their kids, know what they're capable of, know where the problem areas lie, and finding ways to deal with it. If you know your kids, um, even if you've never met them before, but if you find out a way and communicate with them and watch them and talk to them, and in my opinion, treat them with respect even if they don't deserve it, eventually they're going to return the same respect. You've got to remember that there are reasons why the transportation, and we're talking about state and federal transportation, has put in these rules and regulations to safeguard their children. The bus is ten times, nine times safer to ride the bus than it is to be in a personal vehicle. And sometimes I think parents lose sight of that. At the same time, it exacerbates the problem when you're out there on the road and you're driving around all these parents and these people who are driving erratically and, and um, pulling out in front of a bus and, and doing things that it's real hard to drive around. Um, so I think drivers do an amazing job. Drivers don't have a time, have the time to stop in the middle of a route or even when they're unloading kids to go through and explain those 10 rules. You have to do it in little bits and pieces and kind of head it on as it's coming down the, you know, going throughout the school year, hit them one by one. And students just don't remember it a lot of times. So. Anything the school can do, parents can do to get involved and know what's going on, where most parents really don't know. They don't know the policies, they don't know the reasons why, and if they don't, the students aren't going to remember and they don't know. So when we're driving this vehicle and we got 65, 70 students on, on the bus, we're carrying a cargo that gets up and moves around, that talks, sometimes acts out, doesn't follow the rules. At the same time, we're having to make sure that we're keeping our eyes on the road and maintaining, um, you know, getting around all the crazy people that's out there and the traffic patterns, the weather, and what have you. So that's a lot of pressure to put on a bus driver, and that's why sometimes we overreact or we have to take a tough stance and make sure that kids are doing what they're supposed to do on the bus, and we ask for the help of parents and administrators to make sure that they're doing so. Because you've got to remember that you know, it just takes one thing to take your attention off the road. So it's a sobering fact.